This video shows how to configure a typical DMP3 application using Remote Connect and the Skatapak X70 Smart RTU. DMP3 Basics introduced in this application will provide a good foundation for configuring your own DMP3 SCADA network. The application consists of a pumping station monitored and controlled by a SCADAPAC 470 Smart RTU. A typical pumping station may include several local Modbus devices, such as drives, flow meters, pressure transmitters, and an energy meter. Our application will look at a pair of pressure transmitters. These devices may be multi-dropped over one or more RS-45 serial ports on the RTU. The RTU will continuously pull data from all Modbus devices, but it will only report important data changes to the SCADA host using DMP3. The important data will consist of just the significant value changes and any spikes or alarm limit exceedances. Note that because only the important data is reported to the SCADA host, the amount of data communicated is much less than the data pulled continuously between the RTU and the local Modbus devices. This is an advantage on the SCADA network as the host will typically communicate with multiple RTUs and must allocate time for each. Reducing the amount of traffic on the network can improve the refresh rate of the SCADA host and can reduce costs when using a cellular network. In this video demonstration, I begin by configuring Remote Connect to pull a local Modbus device. Then I'll assign a Modbus address to the data pulled. I'll then repeat that by assigning DMP3 addresses to the same data. This will allow us to compare the two protocols at the SCADA host and see the DMP3 advantages I discussed earlier. To simplify our example, we will focus on just one local Modbus device, a pressure transmitter. The pressure transmitter has two measurements I'm interested in polling. The pressure measurement, which is located at Modbus register 30001, and it's formatted as a real value and a temperature measurement at register 30003. This value is a 16-bit integer value. I will configure this part of the application first in Remote Connect now. If you're adding this to an existing project in Remote Connect, you'll find it under Modbus. Now it should be the Modbus master slash client feature, but this feature has to be turned on when you initially created the project or it can be added now. To add it now, we select this menu here. It's under additional functions, but it's the project settings and we need to be offline to select it. So first we select offline. So under Modbus, the default is just to have Modbus RTU slave feature turned on. We want the Modbus RTU master. So under the Modbus category, we now have the master client category. We're going to add our device. In this case, it is the pressure transmitter. So we add a new device. Now there's many settings here, but most of them will just leave as their default. I'm going to leave the name uh, slave device one, but you can change this to perhaps drive one or flow meter. Um, I'll leave that for you. We're going to be using Modbus RTU protocol on a serial port. Now, which port shall I use? We have five ports. Let's just close this for a moment and have a browse of the serial ports. Well, the first two are set up initially for RS-45. There, this one's already selected for Modbus, so let's use serial port 3. However, I could have selected the Modbus protocol for any of the five serial ports. My uh, transmitter, or my pressure transmitter, is at station address 4. 
And then these parameters here, I'm going to keep as their default. I'm going to use five digit uh, Modbus addressing, and I'll pull it by default every half second. There's a timeout every second and three retries. Now, do note that you can select F1 on any of these dialogues and get more help on some of the other um, uh, parameters. Uh, also here we have the order of the bytes um, and bits. I'm talking to a transmitter that's using the default order, so that can be something you might need to consider when connecting to some other devices. So F1 opens up help, and this describes everything uh, about each of those parameters. I'll just draw your attention to the timeout value here. This is the number of consecutive timeouts. Note that if you um, go through three timeouts, perhaps you're testing a disconnection of your cable, that uh, after the, the three timeouts have occurred, it will slow down to a 15 second pull rate. This is just to accommodate other scanners you may have multi-dropped on the same serial port. It allows those to operate more efficiently while that one disconnection is uh, timing out. So I've selected my station address of 4, and that's all I've selected here. Here's my slave device now. I'll apply the change. And I can either click here to begin uh, adding scanners to it, or I can note that it's now listed under the master uh, folder tree. Here's my uh, new slave device. So on this window, we have a summary of our slave device, the station address, what serial port it's on, and it's being scanned at a half second uh, per scan. The uh, bottom area here is a list of diagnostic and control objects that uh, apply to the device. In the center, this is where we add a range of registers to pull. So select Add Scanners. Our uh, pressure and our temperature will be a read operation. The pressure is real, so I'll select a real value, and it begins at 30,001. And this is a, a good reminder here, we're pulling 32-bit real uh, registers, so there are always two registers per uh, real point. So it's just reminding you we need an even number. So for our one pressure, we'll have two registers there. Over here we have the scan rate. Now, um, they're already selected as a default scan rate of a half second. So if we leave these both at zero, it uses that default for this device. If you wanted to confirm that, you can select F1, and it'll provide help for this dialog. And at the bottom here under scan rate, this is where it says to leave it at zero to use the default rates we've already assigned for this Modbus device. So we select OK. Here is what we do uh, when we assign to objects. So we're going to create new objects and not assign any addresses to those objects at the moment. So this is the default. I'm going to apply that. I want to add one more scanner to pull my temperature, which is an integer. So I'll make it a signed integer, and it begins at 30,003 just the one register there. Now here we have on the right now telling you which objects were created for each of the um, registers being pulled. So this is the long name for our uh, temperature value at register 30,003 and this is the one for the first one for pressure. If we write this to our controller, notice that we'll, we're still offline from having adjusted the project settings. So I'll select online first and then write it. Now, how to view our scanner in action? Well, we want to look at the objects online. Now, these are just, uh, in our object browser, just the I.O. objects, so we won't see the new scanner objects on this browser. We need to create our own browser for those. So to do that, that's one of the offline uh, configuration actions. So we'll select Configure to open up the offline uh, tab again. So under Objects, 
we see that here's our new objects created, um, some of the diagnostic ones and the two that we're actually scanning. Let's create an object browser just for those. So under object browsers, we can add a new browser and we'll call it slave device one. We'll add all the entries that have the group object. There it is right for us. It's the object slave device one. So that puts all the objects we're interested in. We'll apply that and then look at it online. Here's our browser added and then start refreshing it. Let's look at it a little more often, perhaps every two seconds. Okay, so we see the message count increasing. It's supposed to be pulling uh, twice a second, so we see that increasing. There's been some error messages. This is before I uh, connected the cable. And then we have a communication status of four. We'll look up what that means, but I assume that is successful. You can take the device in and out of service with this point. And then here's our pressure. Uh, it's displaying in um, an integer format, so we need to change that to real. And this is our temperature. So first of all, I'll go back to the browser and change the display format for the pressure. Sorry, edit entry, change the display to real. And the other thing I'd like to do is rename this to being pressure and temperature. And we'll rename it to pressure. And the other one, I'll rename that to temperature. And it is in degrees centigrade, so I'll add C as well. Apply. Now we've renamed the object, so I will write that to the controller. Back online in our object browser, refreshing twice uh, every two seconds. Now we have the labels of pressure and temperature, and here's our real display. So 60 PSI or whatever the, the units are. If I change the value at the source, we'll see uh, the value change. I've lowered the temperature and increased the pressure. Returning to our schematic of the application, we now have these two objects in the RTU that contain the data we've pulled from our pressure transmitter. Well, let's include the SCADA host now. Unlike Telpay SCADA packs, the data in a 470 is saved in objects instead of Modbus registers. All this means is that you get to decide how and when you want your SCADA host to access this data. How? Well, you choose what Modbus or DMP3 address to assign to your object's data. And when? Well, if you don't want the host to access the data, then don't assign an address to the object's data. Initially, when you create a new X70 project, none of the objects have been assigned protocol addresses and any new objects you create initially do not have assigned addresses, so all the data is initially inaccessible to a SCADA host. Let's begin first by assigning Modbus addresses to our two objects, and then we'll repeat by assigning DMP3 addresses. I switch to the configuration view of my object browser and double-click this object first. This is where I assign a DMP3 address, and here's where I assign the Modbus. I'm going to use 30101, and I'll select a, um, the real uh, format. For my temperature, I'll assign the address 30103, and this will be a signed integer. applying that. Now I can write this to my controller, but there's something I need to enable first. We haven't enabled any Modbus TCP server settings, so we need to go offline and under project settings, 
Modbus IP server. We need to enable this one. Now under Modbus and server settings, in addition to these settings we had earlier, we can now uh, confirm we want to use the TCP port 502 and our TCP address. So this is the station address of our RTU for Modbus TCP. We'll choose the default of one. Now I'll write that to my controller. Going online first and writing. I'm using GeoSCADA Expert as my SCADA host. I have two objects assigned to the Modbus addresses of 30,101 and 30,103. So if I look at both here, um, I have the object browser also polling and uh, we have the value of 68.48 or 9. And if I change the value at the source, so if I raise the pressure, we have 80.64, 83.17, and it's pulling nicely in the host and changing the temperature up 28 degrees, 30 degrees. There it is in both places. Looking again at our schematic, we've assigned Modbus addresses to our two objects. Now let's repeat by assigning these DMP3 addresses to the same objects.